Hi, I'm back finally. So here I am doing another 3M wood piece. Uh, this is also from Wicked Gold. This one is on a plain wood piece. Um, lately she has changed it to on a white background or black if you request it. But this is just on the wood. So you can see me just applying the foils this time and using my um, X-Acto knife and weeding pen to pull it up. I'm using the X-Acto knife to cut off places where it wasn't scored, but I don't want it all the same color. So you can see me pulling those off and then changing that. And then I will use like a little nail um, cuticle pusher I think uh, these are nail foil these ones are nail foil so they it came with it but it's just like a little uh, cuticle pusher type thing you can also use like a stiff brush or any or your fingernail I did that sometimes too any of those will work here I'm just picking out all the little bitty parts between the leaves and yes this is sped up quite a bit because I don't think y'all want to watch me do all that it's kind of boring honestly and the video is kind of long enough with that even very sped up although I do really wish I worked this fast some days but I really do not so now moving into some micas and then cleaning it off in between and then brushing off the excess again using the exacto knife to cut pieces that I don't want still attached that aren't scored. You'll see me doing that a lot on this piece because um, some of the p parts are connected to the background and uh, that wasn't the look I was going for this time. And in between all of the different mica colors, I'm trying to wipe off the excess to try and um, not have that. Now I'm going to do foils again. So on this piece, I believe I used um, foils, mica, and I think I used some glitter, which you'll see later. Again, th that one is mica powder, and I believe that's the storybook collection from Woody's Goodies, and it's amazing. It's so pretty. Some more foils. I think that foil came from uh, Southern Belle glitter, a little piece I cut off. Now moving into some blue mica powder for one of the flowers. Love that blue. Okay, I love all of her mica powders. Most of the mica powders came from Woody's Goodies. A few of them may have come from Mr. Nola's. I don't remember anymore, but that's where mo most of my micas come from, one or the other place. If you want the actual names, let me know and I will put them on. Um, I will try and remember to add that to the description before I post, but life has been getting in the way and that's why it's taken me so long to do this. And I'm clean there. I was just cleaning off my brush in between with the makeup palette cleaner, something like that. I've heard you can find it at like Dollar Tree, that one I got from Amazon, but you can find them anywhere. More mica powder, I think that's a storybook collection also. Cleaning it off. 
And for the cleaning it off to brush off the excess, I'm just using a cheap chip brush. This needs to be a kind of a stiff brush. I usually use the chip brushes because they seem to work really well. And when doing the mica powder in the foils, um, be conscious of what order you're going into because sometimes with the micas, if, especially if it's a lighter color, the foils will stick to where the mica was and vice versa. For most of this, I didn't have that trouble except later. You'll see when I use some white lighter colors. With the darker colors, it doesn't seem to make a difference as much. But this is kind of like a light green soft color. Also from Wendy's Goodies. This one is a more intricate design, so it obviously took me longer because there were lots of little pieces. But I absolutely love the way this turned out. Stay to the end or fast forward and you can see. And this is the same mica powder I used on the bottom part. I just pulled it off in different sections to make it easier using the chip, but chip brush to clean it off. In the middle of the paw part, I'm doing a pink because I thought that was appropriate. And you can see the wood background until I cover it up there a little bit more. And on some of the lighter colors, especially the mica, you can still kind of see the wood texture behind it, which I really love. But the new white color behind is also amazing and it opens up different options. So that's always good. And right there, the outline is attached to some of the leaves. So I'm just using the X-Acto knife to cut it off so, I, so it doesn't all attach this time. Sometimes I do it differently, but this time I wanted to do it like that. And some of this I cut out a little bit because I was out of frame. I apologize for that, but I'm just using some foil. I'm trying to be really careful here because this is a dark colored foil and it was sticking a little bit to the other areas around it. So I was trying to be careful to only press where I wanted it. But there was a little bit of overlap, but I thought it gave it kind of a cute rustic look, so I didn't mind it too much. And where it did, I kind of, I was kind of able to pull it off, kind of scrape it off a little bit with my fingernail. But some areas I wasn't able to, but I still like the way it looked okay. And I believe that one is called Oil Slick from Southern Bell Glitter. It is like, it looks like darker and black in the, in the video, but in person it's like a holographic, like many color shifts. It is really pretty. But I wanted more of a darker look around the outside just to frame it better. Then I'm just kind of going around, touching up where it didn't get down very well and where I wanted a little bit better coverage. And now I'm doing the little, what I thought looked like calla lily, so that's what I'm going with with them. So I'm just pulling off the backing paper. And then I'm going to use a white foil and press it on there and kind of try and get some 
better coverage and you see my little cuticle pusher on those and then try to clean off a little bit where it stuck where I didn't really want it to so with the foils be careful to only press where you want them and try not to make contact with other areas And again, I'm starting to go out of frame here. I'm, I apologize. I'm still learning how to stay in frame. I get too involved in the process and trying to see what I'm doing, honestly. Then I just turned on my light there. Sorry about the glare. It was getting dark and I wanted to see better what I was missing and stuff. So now I'm doing the stamens. I think that's the right word. And on those, I decided to use like a gold colored mica powder. And then just trying to clean up a little bit where the white stuck where I didn't want it to. And I'm using um, some fine white glitter to do the stamen areas because I. Uh, to do some of the, oh, the outline of the calla lily. That's what that was. Sorry, it's been a while since I actually did this. I've got in the way in family emergencies and such. So that was a fine white glitter that I did on the outline of the calla lilies. And now we're ready to dome coat. I did let it sit for a little while just to be sure. So I am burnishing it really well from the back side and the front side onto um, this is transfer paper. I believe I either got this one from Amazon or Expressions Vinyl. I don't remember which one. And so I'm using a thicker epoxy. This one's actually Mr. Nola's um, glass coat that I am using. And I, it's older batch, so it started to turn a tiny bit yellow, so I added a hint of blue into my cup which is why it's kind of a light bluish color but after it's on there you can't see it at all and I'm just trying to carefully go around the edges and try not to get a whole lot of overlap um, runoff on it. I still do but I'll show you how to clean that up in a moment. So just trying to carefully go around the edges and not let it go over I'm still working on my doming technique and stuff, but I'm getting a little bit better at it. I'm getting less overflow. In this case, I didn't want it to run over the sides. Uh, on some of them, I, try, I want it to just to give it better coverage on the sides, but on the wood pieces, I usually don't want it to because I don't like to waste my product, honestly. And I don't like the cleanup either. But in future videos, I will go ahead and show you how I do um, taper latex, protect the back side if I'm having it up on the surface, and then get drip over the sides if necessary. So I'm just trying to get make sure I got on all the spots and spread it out. Right there, I'm cleaning up where it started to come off the edge. Uh, and now I'm using my little torch to try and pop some bubbles. I'm cleaning up some more spills because if you paid attention in science class about um, with the, I don't know if anyone else did this with the penny and the water dropper with the surface tension, that's what's going on here. We're trying to keep track of the surface tension. Now I zoomed in, so hopefully you can see some bubbles popping because I find it entertaining. I like watching the bubbles pop. And now we're ready to clean up the spills after it cured. Don't wait for it to cure like past 24 hours because then it gets a little harder and a little harder to clean up. But you still can, it's just a little more difficult. I'm starting with using some very old jewelry wire cutters that I have hanging around that don't work for much else but they're really good for kind of clipping some of this off and since it's still 
not totally cured it kind of just pops off the wood right there and then I'll show you a couple of other techniques depending on which one's working and which one's not there I'm using my heat gun to heat up in that little area because it was hard to get to with the little clippers so I'm heating that up and then I get my little exacto knife again sorry I'm out of frame again but I'm just using my exacto knife to try and and now I'm using my torch to heat it up um, both one both ways work I I vary back and forth on which way I do it you could also use a heated uh, knife if you have one I do have one but that requires getting it out and plugging it in and all that so it's just easier to heat it up or even just use the torch to heat my exacto blade knife which I also do there you'll see um, so try the different techniques and see which one works best for you depending on the project I will do all or various of these depending on the corners and honestly what I grab first and since this one is just the one sided with 3M I don't have to worry about the back as much and then I just um, UV or uh, super glue or glue uh, finding on the back and here we are finished product